Hey guys, welcome. Um, it's barley time and we've just hit 7 a.m. I know all of you guys back home, it's a little later, it's 10 and I know that we often will start class at 9.30 but um, what will happen today is a, just a little sample of a yin class that I think is super important um, at this time of um, the situations that we're going through. I thought that yin might be the nicest class to offer you today because it gives us an opportunity to um, delve in a little bit deeper and remove some of the, I guess, some of the chatter that might be going on in the mind. So um, I'm going to give you a few moments to jump on board because I know that people will probably need to collect a few bits and pieces. Um, I've brought with me some cushions, um, some beach towels, some glasses, I'll explain why, and um, also a few bits and pieces like a bolster from my from my room as well so let me know how it's going um, I can only if there's any problems and I'm delving in a little bit deeper because I've got this totally um, propped up with laptops and everything like that so let me know how it's going can you hear me um, and can you see what's going on um, in the background so just a little heads up would be awesome and if there's any problems, just uh, just send something in the comments for me here. Alrighty, so this is uh, some of the... Okay, I'm the wrong way around. Thanks, Gilly. <laughs> Alrighty, maybe this looks better, yeah? Tell me. Alrighty, let's just, let's just see how this goes. Uh, the reason why I turned the phone around the other way was so that you could see the whole mat. So we're going to be... Um, Okay, we're going to be rolling with this and we're going to see how, how it goes. All very, very new to me. You know I often will say to you guys, I'm a yoga teacher. I am so not an IT person, but um, you know what? Some of the things that I've learnt whilst I've been away, you have to get uncomfortable, okay? And that's pretty tough, you know? And I know that you guys are all feeling uncomfortable at this point in time. Um, I'm not feeling probably the same level of being uncomfortable as... Um, in the space that you guys are in in the moment, but I know pretty well as of 6.30 tomorrow morning when I touch down, it's gonna be a huge shock for me. And uh, I'm gonna to have to learn like you guys have already how to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. And um, we can either make that um, a challenge for us, we can either make that um, a difficulty, or we can rise and we can step up. Okay, so whilst I was away, or whilst I'm still away, um, we had to set our intentions. Okay, what is it that I wanted to get out of the out of the three weeks that I was here? Yeah, I wanted to learn, but one of the things that I know has happened to me is I, it's forced me to step up and be um, a bit stronger in my practice, um, a bit a bit stronger to you guys, um, and to really. Um, deliver what my real purpose is so you're gonna see a lot more of me getting comfortable with the uncomfortable and also one of the other things that yin teaches us is to be compassionate that's important at the moment it also teaches us to be adaptable i don't have blocks but i have two glasses that the girls gave me from the kitchen they're going to be my blocks so don't feel like you need anything antsy fancy. I don't have anything other than my yoga mat. So I've had to get some um, some cushions from my room and I have this bolster at the end of my bed. So I'm gonna use that as well. So if you haven't got any little props, go collect some. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, as I said, anything fancy. Get some beach towels, get some bath towels. Um, get some books that you can hold on to if need be. Our yin class that we'll work through today is purely here to allow us to delve a little bit deeper into some stretches, which I think is really important at this point in time to help us also deal with some of the chitter chatter that's going on in our minds. And it's going to allow us to um, notice that there are distractions and you're going to hear and see some distractions here. The roosters are going to start crowing. The birds are going. There's a massive river that runs down the side of me here. That starts flushing. The girls from the kitchen are walking by. The sun's blaring in my eyes. So there's heaps and heaps and heaps of distractions. We can either get sucked into the distractions 
or we can choose to sit them in the background and allow them to be there, acknowledge that they're there, but head on with our practice. Okay, stay, stay focused. Gwynnie, my teacher, he says to me, sharpen the knife less. Okay, know where you're going. Okay, stay true to your word. And that's what we're gonna do in practice today. So if you haven't got your bits and pieces, go collect them. I'm gonna get ready and get started for you here. A little bit of yin practice is where we're gonna hit. And I can see quite a few of you on. The beauty of the phone, yeah, I can see Donna is with me, Luba's on, Gillian, um, Danielle. So good morning to all my beautiful people. I have missed you. I have seen a few of your little faces on Facebook, but um, I really look forward to seeing you all when I do, when I do get home. But when you're ready, shall we get started? We start with some breath work, always. Okay. One of the things that we, we learn here is that there is very few things we know that we can control. Okay. We can't control really what's going on outside there, but what we can control, the only thing we can control is us. Okay. I can control my thoughts. I can control my behavior. I can control my thinking. I can control my breath. Okay. So if all else fails, you come back to your breath. It's the first thing that you ever did. It's going to be the last thing you'll ever do. Okay. Something that you were born with and something that no one can ever take away from you. Okay. Join me. Hands at the heart. Okay. I'm sitting in what we call hero pose. If this doesn't serve you, that's okay. Underneath the backs of my knees. Between my knees. Yeah. Sitting cross-legged, like I've even got like rocks. Actually, I've got a tree trunk under my knee. My knee. So um, get, get uncomfortable. This, this is like the longest grass you've ever seen in your life. Um, so I'm going to be sinking and, and, and diving and, and, and I'm not going to be used to what I'm normally used to as either a wood floor or the studio floor. But that's okay. Okay. Because life is so uncertain. Okay. So let's get comfortable with being uncertain. Again, if I set, set you into a place where you're not comfortable, what's the most important thing is this practice is for you, it's not for me. Okay. You get yourself comfortable. Breath work, let's start. And let's get comfortable wherever we might be. Wherever that is, start to feel the legs connected to the earth. Okay. Grounding at this point in time is so very, very, very important. Okay. Do me a favor, get outside, get your shoes off and feel the earth underneath your feet. It's amazing. Okay. Start to become more sensory. Okay. What I mean by that is start to actually feel what is actually going on in your body right now and acknowledge it. Okay. How does my legs feel? How do they feel against the touch of the floor or the surface that's underneath me? Okay. Start to get for me inside your body and take time to get out of your head now. Okay, so start to feel. Okay. What's going on in the spine? Okay. Have we sunken? Or can we get some length into the spine? Okay, lift from the crown of the head and feel like there's that gentle string elongating the spine. Soften the shoulders. We carry so much load in these poor little guys here. When things get tough and stressed, these things just rise and hug our ears. Can you actually just let them go? Okay. A yin practice is literally that. It's about surrendering and letting go, and we just need to do that now. Okay. Find your breath always there but come and really find where the breath is okay sense the breath perhaps sense I often say do you feel that breath fill the base of your lungs what we call the lower lobes of the lungs and start to feel all the way up to the top okay, right up here to the collarbones and can you make that the size of this chest a little more expansive? Okay. Breath is our life source. No breath, no life. And just let it go. Okay. Don't manipulate it. Don't worry about is the inhale the same length as the exhale. Just breathe for me here.
and you're going to hear noises and sounds around you and that's okay. One of the skills that we're going to learn whilst we're together in uh, this whole new platform, this whole new phase is there is going to be plenty of distractions around you. And the skill and the art that we're going to learn is that we're going to acknowledge that they're there. But we're not going to delve into them until we truly need to. Okay, this is our practice now. Okay. Self-care. Start to soften the body for me from here. Okay. Let's go to the head. Okay. A little softness through the scalp. Okay. The scalp does get tense and tight. Okay. Come down to the eyebrows. There's that space that sits between the eyebrows. Sometimes we might call it the third eye. Okay. Can you make that space between the eyebrows just a little wider? We start to worry, the brows knit together, okay, and it creates tension. Get space there. Feel that freedom that comes when you can open up that space between the eyebrows. Let the eyes fall and sink back into the eye sockets. Come around to the jaw, okay, check it out. Are you clenching your teeth? Are you holding on tight in the jawline? A lot of tension gets stored in this, what we call the TMJ. Okay, this jawline here, particularly when we grind or grit those teeth together. Let your tongue relax. We usually say let it sit up into the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. Okay, the tongue is a muscle, soften it. And feel the side of the jaw soften and the neckline soften. Okay, these muscles let go. Start to feel how the chest expands on the inhale, how the belly perhaps might rise with it. And take a big exhale, let it go. Let everything release on that breath out. Feel everything start to soften on the exhale. Okay. Bring life, bring energy, bring force, bring prana, bring chi into the body on the inhale. And as we say, anything that doesn't serve us, anything we don't need, just let it go. Exhale. Okay. Let's stay with this breath. Three more rounds. Inhale. Don't worry, don't worry what it looks like. Don't worry about whether or not the inhale is as long and as deep as the exhale. Just take a moment to connect into the breath. That's all we want to do. Rope it back in. Let it be a center of a focus. Let it be a center of attention. One last breath. Take time to open the eyes. Okay, don't rush. Keep the gaze soft. And when you're ready, if you've got any props that might have been helping or supporting you from here, Take it out from underneath. We're gonna come and sit cross-legged. And I know this is not always easy for all of us either. Okay. So again, um, be adaptable. Okay. This is one of the things that I really wanna teach us in our yin practice, but in all of our practices. Be adaptable. Don't feel like we have to stay with the same old, same old. Okay. It obviously doesn't serve us. Okay. No blocks, glasses. Okay. Am I concerned about it? No, it's the best I've got. So what's going to happen here? And Bali teaches, teaches us, a, taught me a lot about that. This could still go underneath the back of the pelvis, sitting cross-legged. It's just enough to tip the pelvis forward. That's all we want to do. Okay, we want to get that spine nice and elongated. And even for me, who can sit cross-legged, it's just so nice for me to sit with this little bit of extra propping up into my back. Okay, come bring the palms of the hands down to the floor. Okay, 
and you can even be doing this outside. Okay, you don't have to be inside to do this. Okay. Walk the hands slowly forward. Okay. Take your time. Now you all know that yin is a practice that we sit into and that we hold. Okay. I'm going to talk you through. I'm going to try and keep your mind focused on the job at hand. Okay. And you might get to a point where you think like, that's it. Okay, that's my edge. That's as far as I can go here. And that's fine. But you might need a little prop. I might go grab my, my little bolster. Okay. And I might need that over my legs as I sit here. Or I might even need to pop it sort of just here underneath my chest. And that's fine too. In practice is about feeling what's going on. It's not about taking yourself to that point where it is totally uncomfortable. Yes, I have to feel what's going on and I have to acknowledge that, but I don't have to sit here feeling as low that my back's gonna break, my knees are gonna you know, go, go, um, go numb or um, feel terribly um, you know, ting tingly. But allow yourself just to soften and surrender into it. We're, we're often too busy wanting to know what's going on. Yeah, what's, what's happening? Okay, let it go. Drop the head. Open up the back of the neck. Now, in the back of the neck is um, there's, a, there's a junction there between the cervical spine and the thoracic spine. We call it the CT junction. Uh, in my practice that I've just learnt, we call it um, the roadblock. Okay, the traffic jam. It gets loaded really heavily up through here and lots of compression okay so let's the back of the neck release let it go let it soften and start to get curious about where you are okay and i say get curious do, do i have to sit where i am or can i explore this a little deeper and a little further okay and sit with it and sit in your body and start to feel. Remember I said at the beginning, we're trying to get out of what our head, these silly little stories that our head's telling us, okay? They are merely thoughts, okay? And start to feel what's going on in your body. Then the more that we listen to the body, the more we can answer it, the better we can serve it. Okay. Is it tired? Is it telling us it's tired? Well, then what am I gonna do about it? Okay, am I gonna rest or am I gonna keep pushing? Start to continue to use the breath to soften. Start to observe what happens as you begin to let go. Keep coming back to the breath for me. Okay, continue to feel as that breath now. Feel the back of your lungs. Feel that expansiveness that you can bring to the back of that rib cage. Let's hang in here for another three breaths. Okay. It's beautiful. You guys are doing so well. How about we go around towards the left-hand side? Let's just take a walk. Okay. Now this can change the whole emphasis of the pose and you might think, wow, I need some more support here. Perfect, grab something, get it in lie down okay you don't have to have your head forward if that doesn't work for you don't put your head forward put it to the side okay. get comfortable and soften into it and the more that you start to acknowledge that the body okay. is safe okay. the less it's going to hold on okay. the less it's going to grip and and bind and and feel restricted and you know, send your attention to the part of the body that you're feeling it okay is it here in the lower back And is there any part there that I can perhaps send my attention to 
that can release that area. Can I breathe into that lower back perhaps? Can I soften it? Can I actually feel the muscles releasing and letting go? One of the amazing things about yin practice is that it goes to the deeper levels. So I will talk to you about the fascial layers of the body. Okay, this is exactly where we're going. We're going into the tendons, the ligaments, the fascia, okay, the, what we call the connective tissue. Okay. We're going into the meridians, okay, so this is through um, traditional Chinese medicine, okay, the meridians of the body. Okay. Um, and if I vaguely just talk to you about that, then the back of the body is um, often the, the bladder, where the bladder meridians are. Hold here for another three breaths. Okay, take the last few breaths to see if the body can release any more. Okay, can it soften? And then find your way back to center. Just walk the hands slowly. Remember, there is absolutely no rush. We have all the time in the world. Walk the hands slowly back in. Let's drop chin to chest. Think of yourself like a little rag doll rolling back up, lifting, lengthening the spine if it's comfortable to keep the eyes closed. Just stay here. Whenever we take a deep stretch in yin practice, we always come back to some kind of reset, some kind of neutral, okay? A place where the body can take on board all of the juiciness of what we just did, okay? We, we, we close down quite a few areas of the body just there, okay? We close down this, this hip junction here, okay? We've still got these knees closed, okay? Let's, let's address that, okay? maybe we walk these legs out and that's okay feel what happens when we release um that little joint oh i see that my luba is on hello luba lorraine's with us too miss kel and julia i can see you now and if you want to have a little jiggle of the legs go there okay. what i have learned so much about being here nothing's fixed Nothing's permanent. That's for sure. I'm coming home. Cross those legs. Can't live in my bubble forever here. Alrighty, here we go. Okay, come forward with me. So the second time round might feel a little different, might feel a little softer. And you know what? You can play with this. Okay, you don't have to have your hands forward. And you have, don't have to push, push, push. Okay, if your body is saying to you, you know what? I want a little shimmy here. Okay, I want a little koozy little sway going on here. Like I'm, I'm in the pool and I'm just floating. Okay, go there. No one's stopping you. Start to feel the whole back of the body open up. Feel across the back of the lungs, expand. Soften the shoulders. Good. And we're gonna go around to our right hand side now. Take that twist. Okay. Settle in here. Okay. Now I even know myself, when I go around to a different side, just simply because of what goes on in my right hand side, that range may not be anywhere near, which is perfectly fine. It's nowhere near what it might be um, on the other side. And you know what? I've got to come to terms with that. I've got to accept that. Okay. That's the way it is. And there's no need for me to try and feel like it has to be the same as the other side. So feel your chest soften onto the thigh. And if it doesn't get there, that's okay. Let's go back to finding that beach towel. 
to support me. Maybe it's that pillow that I need to have. But yin practice is about teaching us how to be how to be kind to ourselves. Okay, we are so hard on ourselves. You know, why haven't I done this today? I've got so much to do. I'm now in isolation. I've got two weeks. I've got to do this, 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 and this. Life's about being a little bit more compassionate. So, yin teaches us to to stop, to be compassionate. To feel what's going on, to hear. To soften and to surrender. And just to notice what's going on with that body. Learning to get out of our heads and start to get into our heart a little bit more. Start, start to actually feel what's going on. Let's stay here three more breaths. Make your way around to the center. Take your time. Remember, we have all the time in the world. And one other beautiful little uh, pieces of learning or what we call threads about yin practices also, yeah, less can be more. Lengthen from the crown of the head. Okay, readjust. Are the legs needing a little break? Can we bring them out here in front? Can we give them a little walk or a little pad out? Okay, get that nice, fresh, new oxygenated blood back into these closed down joints. Okay, this is super important. Okay, and this is where yin practice really helps because it helps with joints and it helps to um, allow really lovely, new, fresh blood to come back in, into them and um, Re, um, re-lubricate them so to help to re-lubricate this what we call the synovial fluid okay. we're going to go wide now so send the legs out into a big V okay. I know this one gets all of us it's one of the, the stretches that tend to really um, show us where our boundaries are and again you know, talking about some of the philosophies of, um, of yoga practice you know, yin is, does teach us that um, we have boundaries and that's life you know we need to know where those boundaries are and we need to know when we've come to the edge of that boundary or whether or not when we're going to cross that boundary okay. again here you might have you know, I've still got my little towel wedged up underneath my bum so I don't end up like this um, come through the the front when you're ready okay just soften hands will come through the front and again this um, is, you know, is a really slow, gentle um, movement that we take. Again, keep in mind that whole philosophy of less is more. Okay, really mindful that we're not in the business of forcing. Okay, and again, some beautiful words uh, just to keep in the back of our mind is that you know, we know what's going on and I don't need to remind you. But allowing yourself just to sit into that and just get comfortable with it, which is all the, the whole principles of this yin practice. Okay? Knowing that there are going to be days and moments that we're going to feel really uncomfortable and really overwhelmed and really out of our, um, out of our depth. But that's okay. We are all going to be okay. I promise you that. I've got to see you guys back in the studio. 
So again here, I might have my trusty bed bolster here. Okay, and it doesn't have to stay in that formation. If this is how it is for me, this is how it is. If it's elbows, this is how it is. Okay. We don't have to do anything via the textbook. Okay, we do what our body's telling us. Okay, soften into it. Again, I get a beautiful learning. Yeah, don't hold on. Just let it go. Surrender into the pose. Okay, know where the edge is of the pose. See it. Don't go over it. Come back into that body for me. Okay, come start feel it. What's going on? Where are we feeling it? What can we do to perhaps soften that area? Okay, what can I do to soften this? You know, we know this is the liver line. Okay, it comes from the big toe all the way up into the, the pelvis. Okay, and it's probably screaming at you right this very moment. It's probably telling you it's there. Okay, and that's okay. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Okay, let it go. There's nothing wrong with a little sigh that goes in with that exhalation as well. Okay. Trust me, there's been lots of big sighs at this end. Big deep breaths in and some big letting goes. And what is gripping? Okay. What's holding on here that's really um, limiting where we're going? And can we let that go? Okay. Is it my back that's trying to pull up for me? Okay, what can I do to soften that? Hang in there for me. Come back, reconnect with that breath. Can you go back and send the breath all the way down into those lower lobes of the lungs? Can you feel the lungs all the way up to the very top? And can you let all of it go? Empty, empty, empty. Get rid of it all. See what's happening to the body when you empty everything, when you let it all go. Hang in there, you have another three breaths for me. Big deep breath out, big sigh if you can. Oh. Big deep breath in. A big sigh. Oh. Let it go. And when we come up, you're going to walk the hands in super slow, chin to chest. Think of yourself like a rag doll, very slowly stack. Okay, we've got all the time in the world. Left and length. Okay. Let's reset. Scoop the hands underneath the backs of the knees. Slide the heels in. And release them back out in front. Take a walk for me here. Okay. Nice. Alrighty. We're going to come over onto the bellies. We call this Sphinx pose. You're probably not going to see all of my body just because of the way I've got to have the, the camera facing up. But um, Sphinx pose, onto the forearms. So take all of your transitions really smoothly. This is a really, really gentle practice. And this is what we need to do right now. Okay, We need to be gentle with ourselves. Take time, roll over. This is not always an easy pose for everyone. I'm gonna wriggle down so I can see you in my camera. And um, what you wanna notice here is that the elbows sit directly underneath the shoulders. So there's still that idea of, of stacking and there's still that importance of making sure that we, we are posturally correct. Why are we doing Sphinx pose? It opens up the front of my body, so it's going to open up my lungs. Okay, 
to create this beautiful expansiveness to the chest. You know, when things start to get intense, we, we begin to close in a lot. If you're working from home, you're probably on devices, the chest will close in. So we're wanting to try and fill that space across the collarbones. Now what can happen, the lower back can often jam up here and um, sometimes um, this can be uncomfortable. Let me give you a couple of suggestions. That little bolster from my bed, okay, can sit here underneath my elbows. I can go more if I want to. Um, my trusty glass, which is officially my, um, my block, could help give me a little bit of propping here for my head. And I become adaptable. And that's a beautiful quality for us all to have, is to know how to become adaptable in our yoga practice and in our outside world. Okay. So, whilst we're here, we don't want to feel like this is, you know, that extreme um, working, a working pose. Okay, it's a yin practice. It's to open up, as I said, the the lung, the lung line of the body. Okay. It's also working here in the kidneys, okay, into this lower part of the back as well. So the kidneys are. You know, my, my teacher Gwynny, he tells me that, that that's, your, that's your bank account. Okay? It's, and I said to him, yeah, it's your ATM, Gwynny. So it's basically where we store all of our energy. So if our kidneys are depleted, then we aren't going to have the energy that we need to get through either day to day, uh, this uh, next few, few months. So we have to nurture these kidneys. Okay? That's why I've chosen for us to do this pose. There's going to be parts of you that are going to want to hold on here. Do me a favor and try and let all that go. Okay. Surrender into the pose. Don't feel like you have to be this you know, almighty warrior here. Okay. Let the front of that pubic bone just soften into, into the, the floor space. Breathe into what you now have as that expansiveness across the chest. Let go of the belly. You know, how often do we hold stuff in our gut? You know, you, we talk about having, I mean, I've got this real gut feeling. Okay, I feel really sick in the stomach because I'm so anxious and I'm so nervous. Why? Because we're holding on there. Okay, we're holding on to tension into the, into the stomach. So let your belly go, let your gut hang out, it's okay. I hope you guys can hear the beautiful crashing waves of the ocean that's just out there in front of me. And um, if not, create that beautiful, serene sound in your own minds. Again, there's going to be thoughts that are going to just filter into that little monkey mind of ours. And it's okay, let them be there. Just don't enter into the conversation. Okay, this is all about you now. Okay, so I want you to put 100% into, uh, into your little ATM account. Let's find another three breaths here. Really feel those lungs pressing into the back of that beautiful wide back that you have. And then let it go. Drop into it on that exhale. Let's go one more. Here's your reset. Take it easy. We're gonna head slowly back into a child. Nice, big, wide-legged child. Let's make this super comfy, super juicy for us all. No glass. But we go wide-legged. 
Yeah. Whatever works here. Okay. We are here to flip us the other way. Okay. Wide legged child's pose. Let your bottom soften into the heels. I'm going to give you a few more cues, so hang in there for me. I know this is not always the comfiest for all of us. So it might be that to get here, we gently wedge that um, towel behind the backs of the knees. Some people, you know, this, you know, their child's pose is this, you know, really high. And that's okay. Do what you need to prop on up here. Okay, what works for you? This is beautiful. I love this is awesome. And my chest is just softening, my heart is melting. The back of my body is expansive. My head is soft. Less, remember, less is more. It was an amazing um quote that I or well, post that I saw a few weeks ago before I came away and um, someone was running a, a course, a training course and it was called um, Slow is the New Advanced um, or Gentle is the New Advanced I think it was and um, it was so timely because at that stage when I'd left you know, not much was going down but and obviously that's, that's you know, a whole different story now but this time is teaching us okay the universe is telling us something. We just have to slow down, guys. And your yoga practice is here to do that for you. It's time just to be kind to ourselves and refuel the tank. Okay, this is what Yin does. It, you know, it's like going to the the petrol station and um, and putting the, you know, the, the the petrol into the tank. Okay, we're filling it back up again. And I think a lot of us were probably running on empty for a while. And uh, it's now time. It's now time to, to top it back up. Get that tank full. Feel it as the front, whole front part of your body melting for me here, melting and softening. Come back in and check in. Okay, remember we talked about how important it was to um, you know, feel what's going on in the body, become a little bit more responsive of what's going on. Acknowledge. Is something trying to grip and hold? Can I let that go? What can I do just to soften? Let's hold here for another three breaths if you can. Okay, where can we go on those last three breaths? Take your time, remember, there is no rush to come out of these poses. When you're ready, slowly bring the head to, uh, to stack softly above those shoulders. Again, it's very, very, very smooth transitions as we come from one pose to the other. That whole essence of being kind and gentle to ourselves coming back off. I know I'm not going to win very many friends with this next one, but trust me, after it you will. So, yep, I'm your friend now, Lise. Get your prop. 
I'm going to need my glasses for this one. Okay. And you know it as, say, like low lunge or getting into crescent of the moon. I'm going to come off my mat so you guys can see me a little bit better. One foot steps more forward into the other. Okay. So I, um, I use, I'm using my cups to, to help prop me. Because if I don't, oh, like I can get to get to the ground, but I'm going to find that my shoulders are going to be up near my knee, up near my ears, and I'm going to create tension here. Okay. So just elevating a little here will make the world of difference. And I can already feel that I've created more space here between my ear and my shoulder. Okay. There's a couple of things that's going to go on down here. Okay, with this pose. I can feel this lengthening here in the front of the leg and I can feel this closing in down here of this joint here in this, um, the, between the femur, the leg and the, the pelvis. Okay. So let's address this guy here in the psoas or in the front of the leg, we call it the psoas or the whole heap of hip flexors. This is notorious for, for pulling into the lower part of your back. Okay. So if we can release through here. Um, often it can give people a hell of a lot of relief in this lower part of the back. Okay, the psoas grips a lot. So you just have to let go for me on this one. Okay, you have to let your body just sink into the front of that thigh. Yes, you're going to feel uncomfortable. but you're gonna know where your edge is. You're gonna breathe through it for me. So you're not gonna hold on, you're not gonna hold the breath. <laughs> Cause we know that's not gonna serve us too well. And you're just gonna soften the whole body and surrender into the stretch. Now it's not, they actually call this dragon pose in uh, Indian practice. It's not a pose that we hold for that three to five minutes. It's something that we do um, for maybe one to two, two minutes because it is quite intense. But start to feel what's going on again. Okay, see if you can rope that mind back into your body. Okay, and I know it goes and wanders, uh, mine is too, the little Katuts here sweeping the around here the all the grass all the leaves get swept constantly you might have seen some of my posts where he was clipping the grass with his secateurs that's how we mow in Bali I asked him do you do this all day sit on your haunches and and clip the grass and he says says to me no no only when you're here I asked him why only when I'm here. He says because we want you to be really, um, we want you to be enjoy. We don't want you to hear noise. We don't want the lawnmower going. So when we leave and we go up to training, the lawnmower comes out. But in the meantime, we get down on our haunches and we clip the grass just so that we can have quiet and peace. A little bit of compassion beautiful okay. come out of this when you're ready this you do not want to rush ease it back feel that gorgeous flush of blood come back in to the front of that hip flexor remember how we get from one side to the other or from one transition from one pose to the other with grace with compassion Oh, here we go. Second sign. Be kind to yourself. We all know that the two sides are very, very different. They're never the same. And again, start to just feel a little bit curious in this. Okay, I talked about curiosity before. We don't have to be textbook in this. Sure that we can, you know, I might be able to get this back leg on an angle, but you, know, you might be a little bit more here. It's where your body wants to take you today. Beautiful learning through our yoga practice. Every day we wake up, every day we feel very, very different. 
And I know you'll agree with me on that because I'm sure each day that you've been waking up, there's been little things that might have sparked you. I love this quote that Gwynnie tells us. He says, um, whenever things start to get a little bit razzed up and, uh, and crazy, he says, I say to myself, I will not be provoked. I will not be provoked. I will not be provoked. And we were all like, yep. You've nailed it there, Gwyn. Remember I talked about how important it was for us to stay, um, I guess, true to ourself and the importance of knowing that there's only one thing in one person or one thing that we can control and that's ourselves. We can control our thoughts. Okay, we can control, obviously, that mind. We can control our breath. Hopefully I've been able to distract you long enough. Some little stories. You've been able to release through that front hip flexor through into that psoas. Okay. Let's take another three breaths here. So often you might even, you know, you'll recall I tell you in class, you know, pull this left hip forward, you really try to deepen into the stretch. That's fine when we're there for 30 seconds, okay? But when we're not there for 30 seconds and we're really digging deep into this fascia and into these, um, you know, these ligaments and tendons, we just let the body surrender into it, okay? Kindness, hashtag, let's ease out of this one. Super duper 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 slow. Oh. That's a tough gig. Okay. Let's change this up a bit and try and go back into a reset, which is lying face down. That's going to give you um, a bit of a relief here through these fronts. So again, ease it out. You know, it, this leg can be jerky. It doesn't have to be beautiful and graceful and like a dancer. Okay. It's what works for you. When you're ready, let's head down to the belly. Okay. Soften, 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 soften. Let me get me back into view with you. Head down, either way, whatever feels right for you. Let me go down so you can see me. Oh, that feels so much better. So just feeling, again, how those hip flexors are being supported by the earth. Let's go with the, we know these little windscreen wiper legs. Um, you know them. Let me wriggle up here so you can see them. Our little swishy swishies. Let's do these. I'll tell you a funny story. So in training, they call them kangaroo legs. We have no idea why they're called kangaroo legs. But I call them windscreen wipers. Kangaroo legs, windscreen wipers, whatever, they, whatever you want to call them not important but what we do know is that it helps to release the sij the sacroiliac joint this is that little fused section in the spine that lower part of the spine because it's already fused it's quite loaded so um it's really nice to uh to get that really subtle movement into this one so that little gentle swish side to side Let them settle into the center. Let the legs go long. And again, with absolute slowness and stillness and kindness to your body, roll over onto your back. I've got one more to give you because I think it's really important to get some lateral, some side stretching. And you know this one. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I don't sit on my little knot that's here behind me and I really hope I, you can see me. Banana Rama, I call it. This is where your legs are going to do this little shuffle out towards the left. And then your head and your shoulders are going to do a little shuffle, shuffle for me out to the left. Collect the tips of the elbows. And I'm going to sit up, but you guys are going to stay with it. As your 
um, legs head out towards the left and your body heads out towards the left, you're officially stretching the right side of your body. So, legs left, trunk left, hold on to the tip of that left elbow. You might start to feel how that right hip wants to, to lift up. Come back and replace that right hip back down onto the on, onto your mat. Breathe into this long line down the side of the body. Okay. So we're opening up the side body, which often gets really collapsed. And it is it, it is the most beautiful feeling to create this spaciousness through the side of the body. Okay. Hang in there for me. Okay, I'll sit up, but you guys are still lying down. I'll do it in this, in this capacity. It's the same idea. So we've got a long extended arm. We're breathing into that whole side body. We're softening and we're letting it go. We're creating spaciousness okay, through this whole side realm of, the, of this rib cage. And even if we weren't in the situation that we currently are in, life itself you know, is, you know, can become really heavy on us. Okay. And we don't often feel that beautiful spaciousness, that lightness. Okay. So for us to continue on with the day and feel a million bucks, okay, we wanna try and open up the body. We want to try and feel like we are light, we are not heavy. Good. Let's hang in there. Three more breaths. Okay, three more beautiful inhalations. Feel how the whole capacity of those lungs expand. Okay, there is life there. And whatever you do not want, you just let go of. Okay. You don't want those thoughts, you don't want those feelings. You don't want those sensations, you get to let them go on the exhale. Okay. You get to go the other side. Okay, the legs will shuffle back into the center. Walk, walk, walk out to your right with your legs, head and shoulders. They're going with you out to the right. Okay, banana rama. Yeah. Or if I'm looking overhead, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see this little crescent kind of shape. Get more length through this left hand side, hold on to the tip of that left elbow, bring it overhead. This makes the world of difference. That collection of that elbow. Okay. It creates that length from the elbow down to to, to that side rib cage. Okay. We get space here into those intercostal muscles. Okay. The space that often gets collapsed. Okay, we, so we start to get overwhelmed, we start to feel anxious and uptight and we just close in on ourselves. Okay, so therefore we feel heavy in ourselves. Okay, create that lightness. Open up. Breathe into that left side rib cage. Okay, that side that you now have opened up. And feel the body just softening into it. Okay, it's so important to feel that with this yin practice that we've been able to just let go of that build up of resistance again another beautiful word that sort of comes to mind here right now in, uh, in current times we just need to let go we just need to trust. Oh, we need to trust. We need to trust that where we are right here, right now, is exactly where we should be. Beautiful. Give me three more breaths here, everyone. And then you're going to go into your most favorite pose that you tell me all the time. Why do you come to yoga? Not for all the other stuff I make you do. And you come for the 10 minutes. The end. Excellent. Let it go. Soften. Come back. Find yourself back onto your mat. Into Shavasana. 
you've got all those beautiful little props that you might have collected on your way your bed bolster your beach towel whatever you got get comfy settle in okay, i'm going to talk you through you're going to lie down i have about two minutes here for you okay once you've got yourself comfortable Come back and reconnect into your breath for me. The one thing that we always know will be with us. Whenever we get stuck, whenever we feel overwhelmed, we've always got it there. It's always in our toolkit. We sometimes forget to bring it out and use it, but it's always there. Feel the effects of that breath for me. Feel the inhalation. Very slowly creep into the lungs. Feel it bringing life force. Feel it bring energy. And just let go on that exhale. Feel the whole body soften. If you're holding on to anything now, anything, let it go. Take time to feel the spaciousness around you today. many might be and have that opportunity of being either at home or working from home but find that quiet time it's the same quiet time and spaciousness that we have between each breath okay, that's where the magic is the magic in the breath is that pause magic in our day is the time that we just stop. I always say the magic in the music is when not just the listening to it but when you turn the music off and you can still feel the beauty of that music resonating through your body. It's in the pauses of life that the beauty actually happens. Be compassionate to yourself today. Give yourself space, give yourself time. You've already done that for me. You've already given yourself an hour of beautiful practice that's gonna set you up for the very best day ever. Stay with me for another three breaths. The biggest breaths that you've taken. In your own time, roll over to whichever side feels most comfortable for you. The rule book is thrown out, no left, no right. Just go with the flow. To continue, ease your way around into a position where you can come to seated pause whatever that looks like for you. And when you do come and bring your hands to your heart, that beautiful, compassionate, kind heart, the heart that will always be with you. 
together we'll close with Namaste. Namaste. So I get to sign off from Bali for you. I have about six hours left of Bali time before I head to the airport. So I will touch down tomorrow morning early hours and um, about 10 o'clock tomorrow I will do Pilates. I'll take a Pilates class. Probably head down towards a very secluded area of the beach. As you know, I am um, in isolation for two weeks, which is wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it because I'm going to do a lot of um, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of preparing, and taking um, our classes online, which will be beautiful because I really love. I, I love teaching, as you all know, and um, I'm going to be able to see you again on a whole different medium. Namaste to you, Guy. Thank you. So, see you on the other side.